maybe even saying just like positive and negative energy, getting away from yeah. like labeling things good and bad, which I've no. been trying to do. But contempt, yeah. contemptually, like conceptually, like I feel like people see things good and bad. So I think maybe right. it's okay for us to kind of like word so it in that way. To reword it. Yeah. Okay. You want, do you want to start? Do you want to switch it up or do you want me to start? I guess I can, I don't know why. I just, you always yeah. announce it the same. So I guess I could switch it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, hey guys, welcome back. Um, Kiki and Momo here with you for another episode. Um, and I know it, it's feeling really weird for me to start because you usually start, but you know, we got to switch it up here on free therapy. So, um, I'm trying to remember how, how you usually word it because it's so good. That's probably why I let you do it. But uh, welcome to free therapy where the therapy isn't real, but I'm a real therapist. <laughs> and I'm your life therapist, life coach, spiritual guide. Here we are. Hey. Hey. Hey, you did. You okay? I'm good now. Yeah, it's just I didn't think about it, and I just got out of my comfort zone a little bit because I got so used to you introducing us. So no, that was, that was probably a good push. Was <laughs> I was good, like lost was in good, my words. That was a good energy starter. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I guess today we said a little bit last time that we were going to get into duality. And I know that we had had a discussion that that was going to be our episode last week, but then I was th yeah. saying like people need to kind of learn to be okay sitting in discomfort before they can actually really kind of get into holding yeah. and understanding the duality in life. And sure. um, did you want to explain a little bit about where you were coming from with what you wanted to yes. share about duality and like maybe the definition mm -hmm. of it? Mm -hmm. So um for for our people who know duality like is yin and yang so if you're in that spiritual perspective of the world like you understand yin and yang if you don't understand yin and yang um it's essentially in layman's terms it's it's the light positive like the feminine divine energy and the balance of the dark or masculine or um uh, yeah, masculine energy. So the divine feminine and the divine masculine energy coinciding, always existing at the same time as a balance of each other. Now that's not to say one is better than the other. Uh, light does not come take good here. Dark, like you can essentially say good and bad energy, but neither are really truly good or bad. It's all based in contextual perception um, to each individual and how you kind of define within yourself good or bad. Um, so yin and yang, yeah, it's happening all the time. Good energy is always around, bad energy is always around. Um, so, and, and I think like it'll even like, uh, holy shit, that was a huge strike of lightning. Very sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm like a dog squirrel. Um, <laughs> my moon is Aries. Uh, so <laughs> Makes sense. if you're wondering, sometimes it's chaotic, but I swear it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's definitely chaotic energy sometimes. Um, <laughs> I think, okay, so what I want to kind of like break down, I think spiritually speaking and what my belief system is, I think that kind of like, let's start from the beginning and then go off because everything kind of like goes off of that. Right. So mm -hmm. scientifically speaking, everything in this world is made out of atoms, everything, Atoms, if you break down a piece of wood, if you break down your skin, if you break down the air molecules around you, everything on the smallest scale is an atom. And so an atom is not necessarily like tangible, but enough of them makes it tangible. It's like movement, it's vibration makes it become tangible. How quickly it moves or how slowly it moves is the level of like, if it's liquid, if it's hard, if it's gelatinous, that type of thing. Right. So, mm -hmm. but at a really, really high vibrational level, it's like <laughs> a rock. Right. So, um, Actually, no, it's like movement opposite. If on a very low vibrational level, it's a rock. On a very high vibrational level, it's like water, right? Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, when you think of an atom, what do you think of? There's protons, 
neutrons and electrons. So there's, I I think P protons, that's the positive energy mean in neutrons is negative energy and then electrons is the electrical binding force. If that's not correct, science nerds come for me, but I'm pretty sure that's what I remember from science class. Okay, so if everything is made out of positive energy, negative energy, and then electrical energy that is binding them in a circle together, right? And that is the basis of everything, then you can tangibly say, scientifically say, for factual evidence, everything is energy. Everything is energy. You are energy, I am energy. And with that said, like, I think that that is what that energy, the electron, the binding force, that to me is the universe. So Mm -hmm. the universe, I don't see as like a God. I don't necessarily see as it like a humanized version. I don't see it as like, uh, you know, necessarily speaking, thinking, whatever, like we are, I see it. And there's I say she because I identify with she, but it's not gendered. It doesn't, it, it's not a thing or person that is conceivable. It's the energy of the entire world cohesively living together in what mm. is the universe, is what is the energy that is us all. So you mm-hmm. are God, I am God in that sense. Because mm-hmm. you are part of it. You're just this like little thing that's sticking out of the ball of energy mm-hmm. that's moving, that's part of it, right? So, you know, I mean, uh, on a tangent of that, it's like we could, there's a lot of things that we, we haven't unlocked in this universe. It's like, I think that we have the capacity to like communicate telepathically and stuff like that. Like I fully believe in manifestation. I fully believe in like anything in terms of energy where you can manipulate the, learn how to manipulate the energy and understand your energetic body enough Mm. like the energetic body being like the chakras like if you can truly learn how to control and align your energy consistently you can manifest and get anything in the world that you want um I mean it's crazy but so energetically speaking the positive and the negative energy so let's focus on that so you know, positive energy and negative energy, it's, uh, it's all going to be on your perception, right? But, so you have to see and understand that there's on a, on a macro level, there's good and bad things always going to be happening in your life, right? That utopian of only positive energy, it, it, it wouldn't, it can't scientifically exist, because if there's only positive utopia, everyone's happy, there's no sadness ever, that's not possible. Because the the positivity cannot exist without the negativity. You know, mm. light cannot exist. The, like our conception of what light is in this world cannot exist unless we know what darkness is. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you know, it's perspective. Right. Like whenever the room is filled with light, you can't conceive Mm -hmm. darkness in that sense when you're in a complete room of darkness you only see light like light has to be there in order for it to be and if not it's just a void of just dark space where you can't even see your hand in front of you Mm -hmm. right so they both have to exist in the shadows and the gray areas and stuff for you to understand and see both at the same time like when you see shadows you're seeing that positive you're seeing that light and that dark exist in the same space to make a cohesive image of movement for you to see around you um but on a on a more on a smaller level like you and yourself there will always be good and there will always be bad there will always mm. be positive and there will always be negative. And, you know, I don't think any specific qualities in people are good or bad. They are, they are, they just are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, based on your perspective and how you've lived contextually, make it good or bad in a specific situation, right? Mm-hmm. So how you perceive it, like, uh, you know, in my duality, I understand, like, the positives of who I am, but I also see the negatives of who I am. And those negatives are negatives to me because I believe that they are because of like, for example, I, a characteristic, I'm, I'm fucking late all the time to everything. Like I want to be on time. And even though I try, like I'll even try 
so hard to be on time and something will pop up always like something will always pop up to make me not on time literally you know that's one of the issues that I've always had with any job I've ever had is like being on time and I'm like I work better with a window but also (laughs) that perspective of like I thoroughly am in my time with people. I give people my time. I give my energy in certain places where I'm really enjoying it. Um, you know, it's, I, I'm more like, Oh, I remember this and this and like, it's, it's a more creative, um, mindset and mm-hmm. like, to, what is it? Um, right brained. It's very right brained mm-hmm. of me to not frequently be on time because what is time like I'm like time is malleable time isn't real time like why does it matter if I'm on time like I'm I'm giving you my time and my energy and I'm giving you the same exact amount of time per day why does it matter if it's shifted by two minutes or not you know what I mean right so anyway I say all this to say is like starting from that basis of understanding duality and that it does exist regardless no matter what you do, there will always be something negative. There will be always negative characteristics of yourself. There will always be negative things happening in your life. And that's not a failure to have those things. That's right. a beautiful thing to have those things. Because you have those things, you have this capacity for joy. So that on a very, uh, that was a long, but on a long but short end of it is we're talking about accepting duality within yourself. So yeah. if you can understand yin and yang, you can understand the negative and positive energy, and you can understand that that balance is, you can kind of see like it's always, like you can learn to accept because you cannot change, you can learn to accept. You mm. know? I don't think I really conceptually understood or really learned about duality until I got to like college. Um, in college, I like learned about duality and in in like a lot to do with like positive like psychology. Um, uh huh. I, I I think there were a lot of bigger terms that I learned that I had been calling it something else, but it made sense right. that that was what it was. So it's right. kind of validating to learn. Like, so I had always associated duality as the balance in life. I've yeah. always been saying for years that I'm really on this journey to become a balanced person for and sure. accept what it means to be in the moment and go with the flow. Cause that to me is how you ride mm-hmm. the natural wave of balance in the world. I mean, if you think about the way I really think about it and it's kind of cool just to kind of prove that it exists without us. Cause sometimes for my head, I just need to believe something. I need proof of something to be real, to really like, you know, just feel like I can, allow myself to go that way which Mm -hmm. you know that's a whole thing that I probably should work through but anyway so the thing is is that like you know if you go somewhere like if you think back to when there were not a lot of people on the earth like um when you're thinking back to like like cavemen like prehistoric like things balances that itself out like populations of animals didn't get overloaded because it had a natural um okay. hierarchy yeah, so of about, things like, that ecosystem. like yeah like the balance of a cycle of an ecosystem of like, the, like you know the there's things that and... yeah like mm-hmm. why things exist like you know there's reasons that why snakes exist to help uh, under right. keep the population of mice or other critters right. uh, down and and so all of these yeah. yeah so all these things are part of this cycle this balance like mm-hmm. even when you, I was mowing my grass today and it even really made me think of this, which is probably why I'm talking about it, but I haven't mowed my grass a while because we've been on vacation. Well, right. my yard looks like a damn jungle because I haven't been cutting it down. I allowed it to just be without my presence in it to fix it in what society standards are for a yard. Mm-hmm. So my yard has like come back to where like it just maintains itself. Like the grass is high, but it's not too high because it's hit a level where it's just like, it's just existing there. The weeds are all over, but like, you know, the spires have come back, like the balance of everything in my yard has come back, you know? So basically like if we're allowing us to sit back in our life and let the world just kind of balance us out in the direction we need to, a lot of that is how I've learned to accept the duality. But a lot of times too, it takes me looking at my situations. Like I realized that yeah. in hard times, it's very hard for me to like 
not get caught up, um, you know, like when something bad is happening and then, um, like you said, like it always is. And I can, I was going to give an example of that because, you know, the time when I found out I was pregnant with Moana was like a big time of where I really, really came to appreciate and just sit and view what was happening in my life, both positive yeah. and negative. And yeah. it was really a, a really cool learning experience for me that even though I get lost sometimes in my emotions now, when they feel very, when I feel like I'm attracting a lot of negative energy to me because things are naturally negative, but I'm focusing on more on them and it's struggling right. for me to hard, like hard for me to focus on the positive energy and the positive things when it just, you know, life just naturally becomes overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I, I really have to think back about moments in my life where I did know how to get through the duality, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah. a, a big example of that was, you know, when I found out the day before I found out I was pregnant, I wrecked and totaled my car on the ice. Um, and so, and then the next day I found out I was pregnant and didn't want to be pregnant. And I was really upset and, and you had, had always to, wanted to be a mom. I like. know. Your but I just life, found my that's all you've ever life. wanted. I know. And it came after a period of like really trying to have a baby. And then yeah. you weren't in that relationship anymore. And right. then you were like, no, I don't want a baby now. But like you had manifested a baby, <laughs> you I know. know? It I just know. comes later than you anticipated. <laughs> Right, right. Well, it, it, that's been a struggle for me. And that's a whole other conversation, just kind of getting to a place where I finally Thanks. accepted that I didn't need a baby right there, that I just wanted one. And just because I want something really bad doesn't mean I need it, because what if it's not meant to happen? Anyway, so when I found out I was pregnant, I had totaled my car. I like didn't feel like I had the money to support it. I was a single mom. Like, how am I supposed to raise this girl on my own? Like, I was really, and then I really thought about it. I was like, well, you know, this is a lot of things that I feel like are negative because I don't want them right now. So they feel really negative. And, but I said, but what are things that are happening right now that are blessings? And in, I, I hadn't been really good at journaling, but I really, in my mind started, really conceptualizing things that I was grateful for and Mm -hmm. looking at things in a different perspective to somehow try to see if I could view any positivity out of it. And trust me, like you have to get in that mindset to be like, I'm going to choose to find these positive things because a lot of times it might be just a lot of small things that kind of happen to outweigh the couple of big things, but you have to find them to make Mm -hmm. it balanced out. And it's your job to find the balance of those things so that you can kind of appreciate both sides. But I, you know, started seeing, and I'm like, well, you know what? I have a house. I'm done with school. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I don't have to struggle through school while I'm pregnant. I Mm -hmm. had a job that I knew that like I could take less time off at. And, you know, so it just like, you know, I somehow, somehow worked out for me to get on Medicaid. It somehow worked out for me to find a new car. It somehow somehow just like works out. Right. Because Mm -hmm. I started focusing on the positive things and got less caught up on the negative things. And I think that's what we wanted to bring up about duality. Yeah. that Like, you know, when you start focusing on the positive things, not only are you ignoring that negative energy and encouraging yourself to be in more positive energy field, which is bringing more positive things to you. Well, when I started just learning to hold both and not be super upset about the negative but also be just you know it it fully immersed and enjoy in the positives then somehow I was just letting myself be I let whatever happened needed to happen because I at some point realized I'm not good at making choices for my life like overall responsibility yes but I am so much in my emotions a lot because I'm just, I'm mm. such a sensitive and emotional person. I let yes. my emotions guide me in life, mm-hmm. but sometimes I need to learn to gain control and insight over those things and how to help them enhance yes. my life instead of bringing a lot of like depression and negative and like yeah. all those strong emotions and not finding like, like I said earlier, rebalancing myself, you know? Yeah. And I think that that balance, like I thought uh, I like in 2019, so I went through a really hard period. So I started going through going to yoga every day for like mm-hmm. nine months straight, at least nine months. Cause it all led up to like, it maybe was a year. No, it was, I think it may have been a year. Anyway, it all led up to me uh, moving 
here and making a big life change. And then the pandemic happened and I got pregnant. But before then, I was going to yoga every single day. I was going to this really incredible donation-based yoga center that was so spiritual and it became this huge part of my life. And I just like, you know, I want that back. But I thought about during that time frame duality a lot, right? So mm. um, I thought about balance a lot, balancing my body, physically being able to balance in a position, but like emotionally being able to balance as well. And, yeah. you know, like, I think for me that that's a hard thing as well as finding balance. And a lot of the perspective I think about is like, balancing anxiety and depression versus being happy and like always thinking about like that being an issue or like always just being able to see and never being able to sit sit mm. in, you know what I mean and as and I think yeah. that that's like how you heal anxiety yeah. and depression. that's how you heal your shit is to be able to like we were talking about the last episode just to sit with it um, right. and, and, and learn to not just like at first you sit with it and, you know, you learn to say, okay, I, I'm going to look at the positive and the negative mm-hmm. and I'm going to just accept that both are happening and be okay mm-hmm. with both happening without trying to change either of them. Um, right. and then you start to kind of see the beauty and start to like, acceptance enjoy, is a big door opener. Like, a- acceptance And sitting with it and just saying, I accept that this is a thing that happens, allows that opens a huge door for you to start to appreciate things. So like Mm. whenever, you know, I'm starting to recognize like whenever someone hurts me and they're not in my life anymore or, you know, dating, someone ghosts me. Um, And I had a, I thought I had a really good connection with them. I thought I had this and that. And I'm, and instead of being hurt and angry and going through this, field of like what ifs what ifs what ifs I focus on appreciating and accepting what's happening okay like this is what's happening mm. have a react a realistic is saying okay well you know what this person's not interested anymore but I am confident within myself and trusting within the universe that like duality always exists so yeah. good is always going to happen good yeah. will always happen and the the hard things are just opportunities for me to learn and grow. If I can pay attention, I can learn and grow from them. So this is, I'll be like, this is an opportunity for growth. Like this is an opportunity for me to release. This is an opportunity for me to say, you know what? That didn't work out, but that means someone else even better is coming. And choosing to actually believe in those, like that's how you live a peaceful life. That's like accepting your duality is the biggest first step you can take towards legitimizing your manifestations. Like when you can really accept your duality and accept the positive and negative and be loving for both energies, if you can be just as loving of who you are and within yourself when you're anxious or depressed or having a really hard day and when you can genuinely love that person as much as you love who you are when you're having a great, confident, feel good, can't fucking tear me down kind of day, you have to love yourself just as much in, in, in both periods. And when you do, you'll be so within your power that you can do fucking anything. You can bring yeah. anything to you. You can manifest anything to happen. Like you, your capacity is endless. Whenever yeah. you genu- genuinely be able are able to love and accept yourself. But the thing is, like, a lot of people don't even know how to get there and yeah. what it means to love yourself. They don't know that it m- loving yourself isn't just taking a bath and journaling, which those things are great um, coping and such and self-care things. But loving yourself is being able to really see yourself and accept the hard parts. You have to love yourself unconditionally. Like, you know, you're, you're like, I'm going to love like how you love your kid Mm. and how you love a lover and Mm -hmm. how you love, uh, you know, everyone, your family member all combined into one. You are your own child. You are your own lover. You are your own parent. You are your own friend. You are your own sibling. You are Mm -hmm. all of those people. So you 
all of the love that you give to all of those people combined into one within yourself. Mm -hmm. And, and that like is so freeing. People can't hurt you. Things can't hurt you. You like, you'll still feel hurt and sadness, but it won't be this extreme level of something that you can't move past. It won't be something that you're going on and on for days and weeks about. It'll be like, that sucks have a good cry about it. And then you're like, you know what? My life's great. I'm moving forward. And that's something I'm just now learning how to do, you know? Yeah. I think a a big part of that helps you kind of being confident and having self-love for yourself Mm -hmm. is something that helps you build yourself up and have the energy and space to deal with hard things. So that's kind of the initiative that I've been trying to convince my clients, a lot of people, myself, that like why it's so important to put work into yourself. And a lot of that putting work into yourself and knowing how to do that all starts to learning how to accept the duality because if you can learn how to regulate emotionally and function Mm -hmm. well and taking time and listening to your intuition and listening to what you need in those moments that it's really hard, you're teaching yourself how to handle it better the next time because yeah. you will inevitably get through every moment. No moment can stay there. You know, it's like, you know, this too shall pass because even though the emotions may not pass for a while, that event has passed. So after the event mm-hmm. passes, it's still up to you to decide how you want to perceive this, how you want to have actions in this. And, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of the times when we aren't trying to work through understanding and holding both the positives and the negative, mm-hmm. like we're not going to get very far in life. If you can't yeah. learn how to hopefully try to manage your life a little better and how you react to it, mm-hmm. then it, it doesn't allow you to continue to grow and know how to do that in the, in the future. And then you get yeah. stuck in the cycle of like more shit and more shit is piling on because mm-hmm. you haven't dealt with the old shit and you're yeah. not working on yourself to know how to deal with new shit. And mm-hmm. then it's just like a shit fuck stack. And here we are. But I mean, like think back to like times where, you know, growth is so necessary. Yeah. Think back to times where you grew yeah what were those times those times for me were some of the scariest most fearful like yeah hard shit to do but Mm -hmm. I needed to go through those hard things to see something I didn't want to see I had Mm -hmm. a period of reckoning like recognizing that having a holding space for that being frustrated being whatever emotion Mm -hmm. I needed to do learning yeah. how to regulate myself with this new thing that I didn't want to see, but I obviously need to see because it was presented to me and I had the awareness and something all came together perfectly where I knew I needed to deal with that. Right. I mean, hard times are the things that like, you know, when I say some of the most fulfilling things I've ever d- done, yeah. which is like buying my house, going to grad school, mm-hmm. going to Europe and traveling for a month by myself, like, yeah, does that sound easy. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> and that's right. why those moments taught me the most about how I should be. And at this point, it's helped me conceptualize a lot of things. And I feel like in a lot of areas, I'm still just figuring out how to be in, in maintenance and you just continue yeah. to emotionally regulate and things are going to get better. But then they kind of like, you know, you got to like pay attention to them and tinker with them. And then you just get yeah. better at doing that. And yeah. I think, you know, maybe is that like a good place to start sharing how they can like conceptually start working with maybe bringing in stuff from last time, not the coping skills or the, those things that we said, but like helping them more sit in this discomfort that Mm -hmm. comes automatic with automatically with duality. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead with what you were thinking, Yeah. yeah. Um, So a lot of what I do is I talk about it. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that the more vulnerable that I am, 
the more that I manage my shame level and shame is something that keeps me in discomfort. And I'm realizing a lot of like society's expectations for me, keep me in Mm. the uncomfortable. Um, And so a lot of the times I've, you know, been fighting myself in my head of like, I'm in this weird limbo place and it's like super uncomfortable because I'm even feeling it in like the energy getting trapped in my body of Mm -hmm. just like, I'm in a fight with myself and I can actually see it now. Cause I I feel like in reality, I've been in a fight with myself for my whole life, but at this point I'm consciously aware of it. And so the person I want to be and who I know deep down, like that inner child, but letting her kind of grow into this adult space with me and embodying fully her. Mm -hmm. Well, the other side is like, it's like that part of you that like is that hurt child who yeah. really wants to be seen and be heard and be understood and didn't and is acting out in spite or that's how I, I see myself. And yeah. so it's like the hurt versus that innocent child who hadn't had a lot happen and just wants to live and be happy mm-hmm. and connect. Like those two people are fighting and it's so hard for me to remember how to hold both. And so Mm -hmm. a lot of what I do is have empathy and acceptance for that hard side and, and validate Mm -hmm. myself because a lot of times, like it, it, so many people can validate you, but if you aren't validating yourself, if I'm not helping myself step out of that victim spot, then I'm going to keep wanting to be spiteful. I'm not going to see why I want to continue working really hard to become a better person. So that I Mm -hmm. treat people well, because if you hurt somebody or if somebody hurts you, like, you know, an eye for an eye is not going to heal anybody. It's going to hurt and damage and we're going to kill everybody. Instead, we have to learn to lower our ego and our hurt and learn to sometimes see the pain in somebody and understand why they hurt you. So a lot of times it's just learning to have empathy. And if you need to call someone and vent, a lot of times maybe I'll come vent to you and just be like, I need a vent. You know, like when you ask me, do you need advice or do you need a vent? Like sometimes I just want to be angry Mm -hmm. and vent. And that's okay. That is what your support system is there for. But a healthy support system is going to let you do that, validate Mm -hmm. you, but also check you, check Mm -hmm. yourself, allow yourself to be checked where you're at. Because yeah. even though you're hurt and it's okay to be hurt and I feel sorry and, and people should, you just want to feel comforted because you're hurt and you want to, you want somebody to feel that hurt with you and, and, and see right. you. Right. And so when you don't get that, you become more hurt. But like, if you're allowing yourself to see the, that you add something to the situation, like what are you doing with your duality? Like, how are you right. choosing to handle that? And if you choose to not accept things as they are, you're not letting yourself step out of that situation. So a lot of this understanding duality for me is a lot of conceptual work and kind of talking myself out in my head. And when I can't do that, I'll call you or I'll talk to Anthony. So a lot of times social supports can really get you out of your head. And a lot of times when those aren't working and I'm feeling really overwhelmed in my body and I just need to be by myself, I'll go, I'll like listen to some music and I'll go take a walk in the woods. Or yes. I'll get in the water because the water's really healing for me. Or I've been really getting into self-care journals that help me answer questions that really yeah. make me think and be gently honest with myself. Because a lot of that t- is like, you know, you not just figuring out how to balance everything in your life, like your validation, mm-hmm. how you perceive other people and how they perceive you in those situations when you're hurting. And, and then actually doing something about it when you like said, okay, I can't be in the sad place anymore. Like I've got to, I've got to get out of this. Like at some point, I think that's where we hope that someone reaches because until then you're not really going to make an avid action into change, you know? Yeah. You have to be really, really want, like you're not going to sustain something that you don't want to do. So you have to really, 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 like in your soul, want that for yourself or be so tired of your own shit that that's that like you have no choice but to do that and to work on yourself. You um, may hate math, but like if you aren't going to work at it, you're not going to get a point, great grade. You have to try. <laughs> right. At some point you have to try if you want right. to be great. 
if right. you want a healthy mindset, if you want a healthy life, if you want a happy life, you have to choose to put in that work. And yeah. this is part of that work. Yeah. And you know, what you were saying about like duality helps you to heal. It helps you to forgive mm. people. You know, I was, um, just talking about that the other day, I was talking about how, like, if you want to heal from something, like you, you, have to really like heal from someone who hurt you you have to accept like yes they hurt me like a parent Mm -hmm. like yes they hurt me and yes their actions were not okay or yes you know that did have a legitimate Mm -hmm. really hard effect on my life and validating that within myself and saying yeah that was hard and I went through that and that was not fair but also the duality exists that like you know they did try their hardest and they were also complex human beings that were also struggling day to day with their own trauma and their own personal history and their own childhood inner child that was never healed. And just, they didn't mean to, and they didn't know what they were doing and, and and doesn't make it better and it doesn't make it excusable or okay, but understanding and accepting that duality that they didn't mean to, but they did, but I still love them, but it's okay that they, that I'm hurt. They hurt me. And it's okay that I need some space from them. Like those things can exist in the same space. Um, and talking about things as well does definitely help me, um, a lot to normalize my own personal duality Mm. and a lot of my healing towards like how I'm seeing and accepting duality in my life is like helping me find self love, like, Mm -hmm. you know, learning how to normalize and love the hard parts of myself and learning how to, um, you know, change my perspective. Like whenever you can see a hard point, you can change your perspective. Like you were talking about, you can change your perspective Mm -hmm. on it. Um, and changing your perspective about, who you think you are and how you think you are and validating the good within. Like I have a hard time validating the good within myself because I Mm. have always been perfectionist and over critical of myself. So like, you know, it's very hard. It's such a subconscious thing for me and being able to, you know, look at myself and say, you know, I I fully am able to accept this within me or this is part of my physical body or the, you know it's just completely yeah. re- reframing my mindset but except fully being able to like accept has been one of the hardest things um so being able to fully accept within yourself um is probably one of the hardest things but once you can see the parts that you need to accept, you can make a conscious effort to look at those parts and be like, I accept Mm. you daily. You know what I mean? Like for me, for a physical example part, like this can, this can be mentally this, you know, anything like that. But for a physical example, like I have always like, there is a part of my stomach at the bottom that Mm -hmm. like folds over into itself, no matter what position I'm in, no matter how, like when I was anorexic, it's like, yeah, in high school was anorexic. And I got down to like a size zero or size two, which is so fucking small. And, um, no, it was a size two. And I just remember fitting into these like tiny white Abercrombie size two fucking shorts yeah. And be like, yeah, but like my stomach still wasn't flat because that's just yeah. how my stomach is. Like yeah. I had a boyfriend one time tell me who like, of course, he had abs and everything. But I, I had a boyfriend one time, me butt ass naked in front of a mirror, had me stand in front of a mirror and picked apart all the things that he would change about my body. Like he would yeah. as like be a personal trainer and change like have me work out to change and he told me that my stomach looked like um a a skinny girl who had just given birth (laughs) and Mm -hmm. I think like you know I just had never had anything but negative thoughts or negative comments about my stomach like even though I had guys who were like there's nothing wrong with like your stomach is fine like I'm not even looking at like it doesn't matter like yeah. I like, or even guys that would be like, I'd like it. And they want to like grab onto it. Cause they think it's mm-hmm. cute. And like any time that they wanted to like the guys who genuinely liked it or thought it was cute would, and they wanted to grab onto my stomach. I thought it was them grabbing on to point out that my stomach was there. Mm-hmm. 
because of that past relationship. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And And you hadn't learned how to accept that and let that go yet. Right. So recently, I mean, my, me and my stomach had a great relationship when I was pregnant and then right after I gave birth feeling great and then it had been more recently in the last few months that I've been looking at my stomach again and having a hard time loving it and um and I just like I've been spending a lot of time just standing in the mirror and saying I accept you and I love Mm. you and I praise you for holding a life like for you you are where the, the like my baby lived for the first 10 months of her existence in this earth for her soul yeah. to live in my body and regardless of what you looked like before this is what you look like now and yeah. I love you and I hold you as part of me and I'm trying to like change my perspective because like I see other women that have tum like little tummies on or like big tummies or any kind of tummies yeah. with cellulite and stretch marks and discoloration and all the other things and I see these women on like Instagram or whatever and I'm like god she's beautiful she could be like right? 10 times bigger than me and I'd be like god she's beautiful and I love yeah. her stomach and it's so cute like there's this girl that's on YouTube that I watch a lot she's like a size 24 or something like that and yeah. she like you know is like I think my stomach looks so cute in this I and I'm that. just like if you like you have the capacity who whose body is bigger than mine right I can have the capacity to do that and I have started to really love my tummy like I have started to really just like take pictures of myself not posed sitting down Mm. and just looking at my stomach and learning to love its beauty and learning to love its curve and learning to love its like all the parts of it like, I'm not yeah. looking at it like, oh, I wish, like, I could change this. Or I love all my body except for this part. Or I love, yeah. no, I just accepted, like, you know what? It's never going to be flat. And yeah. unless I do plastic surgery or do some crazy ab routine, like, even when I was eating really healthy and going to yoga every day, mm-hmm. which requires a lot of ab workout. And I right. was going to, to like two, like sometimes I would do two yoga classes a day and mm-hmm. like just would go after work and just do yoga all night. And like my stomach was in, like I had kind of abs, like you could kind of see them a little bit, but I still had that little pooch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? This is going to be my stomach. It's yeah. just like, it's, uh, that's how I, my body is. That's how I was genetic. God, high-waisted stuff is still kind of in style. Please, please, right. please, right. Me. <laughs> please, why? Why? <laughs> oh, but, I, I think that's a really good point. And there's a lot of ways to work on acceptance, like yes, it, in a concrete a way. Effort. You know, a lot of it, like you said, was just doing mirror work. Mirror work yeah. and body affirmations are a really big thing. It really works. And it's okay. And it's okay if you don't believe those things at first. The fact is, is that you're trying to, you're really, if you can convince yourself to believe, you can convince yourself to believe anything. So you have to allow yourself to believe these things and, and know that just because you say it and you may not mean it right now, that's okay. But just try to mean it in as much as you can in every moment you try to do that and do it often anytime you see yourself in the mirror I even there's like a CBT which is like cognitive behavioral therapy they have Mm -hmm. like um these reminder cards and it could be like your your mottos it could be Mm -hmm. like um Mm -hmm. you know like when I told you you needed some when you needed some extra encouragement and you you put up like you know even art that says things or things on here or things in your car like these mottos or these sayings or something that really hits you and you need a daily reminder and switch those out as you need another big one and everything yeah (laughs) and another one is a gratitude journal if you can start a, a journal and or even just write down three things you're thankful for every day and really challenge yourself to go out of like my house my family my relationship my kids we know you're thankful for those things but 
go and try to be thankful for things that you Different. might not normally be thankful for, or you yeah. kind of push into the corner, or like write uh, write even the list that, of things you want to start accepting. Like I want to yeah. start accepting my hair for how it is, or the yeah. fact that I don't have eyebrows, or the fact that I want to love. I want to start accepting my body, or I want to yeah. accept that my house may not always be clean and organized yeah. because that might not be what I want or what I need, mm-hmm. and that's fine. Um, another thing, you know, alongside acceptance is also setting boundaries. So work on accepting the parts of yourself that are, you know, the good and bad or the things in the world that are good and bad, Mm -hmm. but also are you inviting negative energy in that you can control within yourself? So you can't control the outside world. Those things are going to happen. Right. But you can control the things that you're doing. Are the things that you're doing healthy? Are right. you setting healthy boundaries with yourself, with other right. people, with what you're doing, your activities? Right. Like, are those things bringing you more negative energy? And you may just not have the self-awareness of it yet, but that's okay. Right. But right. I think if you really try to sit with yourself and be like, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to think of something that I don't always do do like when I got pregnant I started wanting to eat out a lot because it was so easy I didn't take time to cook healthy meals and so my body didn't feel good I wasn't at a healthy weight because I wasn't also having time to be active which I love to be active but when my mental health is down and I don't have time it is definitely the last thing that goes but what I realized is what can I do in this moment if all I can do is maybe you know do some kind of exercise with my legs while I feel like I need to mentally check out and just scroll on Facebook. Like I'm trying to not mentally check out and scroll on Facebook, but, but sometimes if that's what you need, meet yourself where you need, but like there are ways to figure out how to meet yourself where you are and try to do whatever is the littlest thing towards your goal you can. Mm -hmm. And if that's all you can handle, you're still making progress. If I, went and walked one loop around my house that is still more exercise than me sitting on the couch eating potato chips. And and I'm not saying that that's not okay, but for me, what I want in my life is I want a healthy relationship with food, which I don't have. I've never been taught that. And I want a healthy relationship, like you said last time with exercise. And so Mm -hmm. I don't like going to the gym. I love biking and kayaking and hiking. Anything in nature heals me. And that feels like Anthony's been taking me get disc golfing. And like, I may not be great at it and it's allowing me to be okay, not being great at, but I'm having fun and it's Mm -hmm. still exercise. So finding things that you enjoy while also doing things that, you know, are good for you, you know, and having that balanced body and balanced life. But Mm -hmm. again, boundaries is a big thing. And I'm sure we'll do a whole episode on boundaries at some point because that's an (laughs) extensive extensive (laughs) topic. So yeah. But I mean, I don't know if there was any last thoughts that you had before we like maybe wrapped up. Yeah. I was just thinking to sum everything up, like what, you know, in summation of what we're saying, and please correct me if this is not correct, but in summation is uh, accepting your own duality uh, is the first huge step into healing, is the first huge step into self-love, uh, is the first huge step into learning to love and accept others around you. Being able to accept bad things and to, like we were saying last time, sit with it um, yep. is is the is a is a major major movement towards living a joyous and positive and hope filled life every single day but it takes conscious tangible effort yeah. where you have to choose to put the work in and choose to consciously be present and put that effort in and feel what you're feeling and accept it fully and being able to give yourself that full conscious effort and acceptance and energy, um, that, that will drastically change your life. It doesn't sound like a lot. And sometimes it's not a lot, but sometimes it is. And it, it, it's, it's a, it is a really huge step that you can take. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much where we're at. We will continue to, I feel like, emphasize duality in the different topics because I feel like all of the topics in our life and us, things that we struggle with are all connected. So, I mean, you will probably see it pop up a little bit 
and we'll yeah. help you kind of help you understand it and continue to share coping skills on how to, to handle those things. Oh, that's what yeah. I was going to say. I was going to give yeah. you one last hey. coping skill of like, that's what it was. I just needed to give myself some space to remember. But um, it was basically like when, I, since I'm in a really hard time right now, kind of, kind of in this accepting my duality again, because I, I accept it. And then it, when it gets hard again, it's hard to accept it. And so I'm working on accepting it again, and then it'll get back there. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now yeah. I'm creating a space in the morning or in some part of the day where I do something that I enjoy to yes. balance out the hard. So right yes. now it could be yoga or it could be a good meal or it could be a good call with a friend and it doesn't have to be the same thing every day, but pick something, journal, listen to music, mm-hmm. watch a good movie, pick something every day, whether you're in something hard or not. And that's going to make your day more significantly better because that is a one big action like you choose what you do during the day right. I know we don't think we are and we can get into that more on another topic like but we can choose what we do so like if you right. feel like there's things that you have to deal with in your life you can choose how you deal with them and so choosing to add more things that you enjoy that bring you joy like don't let your sims level get to like red and you dead yeah. and yeah. like you need to and you need to take care of your mind and body, but take, you also have to take care of that fun le- level too. So take space just it. make sure Enjoy it. the homework for next week. Go do something yes. really fun and like post it in the comments below. And like, I'm going to try to remember to do it for me too. And like, maybe you too, Kiki, and like what yeah. we're doing this week to encourage ourselves to add more positive, happy moments in our life because we are are the person in control of creating those and you know what actually one more thing I want to add and maybe we can talk about this next time and go into more depth is accepting your duality and accepting fully life is to fully be in the moment and accept good things too either yeah sorry what was that to fully be in the like moment and fully accept mm. your life and to fully sit with things means to fully sit with good things too. Yeah. It means to actually let yourself be happy. And yeah. I think it's really hard. Um, Dr. Brene Brown was talking about on one of her podcasts that I was listening to recently is foreboding joy um, not being able to sit with and accept joy because you're always afraid of losing it. So maybe we can talk Ooh. about that next time, how to that's get past that. good. Yeah. yeah. I because think that makes we, sense. Right. Because I feel like we've been talking a lot about sitting with and accepting the negative hard parts, but a lot of people yeah. really struggle with accepting the positive parts too. Especially so. if it's tied to their worthiness. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's that's what we're gonna talk about we're next gonna talk time. About that next that, time. To help you guys conceptualize <laughs> all of one thing, we should get the duality yeah. of it, right? The duality of everything. Um, talk about all that. So we'll talk yeah. about accepting and sitting with the good next time. Awesome. And how to uh, release foreboding joy. This time yeah. we hope you work on uh, sitting with the hard things and sitting with the things that you don't like and learning to yeah. fully, fully accept them. Um, and do conscious uh. De- Practice some mirror exercises. Practice telling yourself whatever yeah. you need to know in the mirror every day, twice a day. And yep. see where you feel. Do it when you brush your teeth. Yeah. Anytime. Make it easy on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then you just add it from then on. Because now I look in the mirror in my car and I'm like, girl, you're so awesome. You're not feeling awesome yes. right now, but you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, I guess we'll leave you guys here. And we look forward Thank to doing so this next too. episode. I, I just find so much joy in doing these and it just, I really enjoy it because it's always a hard time to carve out time to do this. But when I do like it, yeah. this is at least one of the happy things in my day, just kind of learning to mm. kind of take what we're teaching everybody and right. things that we know, but also continuing to use it in our life too at yeah. the moment. So that's cool. Yeah. Same. Thank you as always, Kiki. Thank you, Momo. <laughs> Thank you guys. Please like, subscribe, you know, all of the things. Right. Help support us Put and help us. Notification uh, on. Get a notification when we upload. Yes. Follow yes. us on Instagram. We'll put yes. the in the in the description box below. We're gonna put where you can find us. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye.